This program I have open is called Tinkercad. You can find it at Tinkercad.com. It's completely free. Uh, I think there's a little sign up and it allows you to store what you've created and also to share what you've created and use other things that people share. So it's, it's well worth uh, doing that. I think it's a cool program. Today I'm going to make a 4 inch diameter cone center. And fortunately this comes with a lot of pre-made shapes that I can use for a cone center. One is a cone. That's always handy. And then I need a cylinder. I'm going to tilt that down a little bit so you can see it. And what's not going to be in this window, you can just do the search. And we're going to search for thread. And here's the thread that we need. We'll work with the thread first. It might be the most intimidating one to work with, <clears throat> but trust me, as soon as you understand it, and if you understand threads, you have it made already. So the diameter for my life center takes 3 quarter 10. It's got 10 threads an inch. I know the plastic shrinks. I've played with this number. I'm happy with 0.87. That might seem big. It works for me, so that's what I'm going to use. The pitch, that is how many threads per inch. Again, it's 0.1. So there, there's 0.1. Now this might get tricky because uh, what does segments mean? Well, it means that's three-sided. It means we want to go maximum size to get it as smooth as you can. This next one. That's how many rotations means how many threads that you have. Do not make the mistake of grabbing this right here and raising it up because it will elongate the threads and it'll look like some twisty bar. Do it right here. I think that uh, 13 is going to be just right for what I'm doing. Rotations is done. That was that. The tip scale. I don't change these. I find that they work perfect the way they are. That's set at zero, tip segments is two, and thread scale is one. This part is now pretty much done. I'm just going to move it over a little bit. This one, I'm going to use that to create a little recess in the face of the cone center so that the flat spot on my live center has a place to go. So to do that, I know that uh, I need to make that one point zero two, and I need to do that in both places so it stays round. Okay, and then the height, I can click on this, I can drag it down, or I can just say, oh, I think I want, uh, see, what was I going to do there? Eighth inch. And do an eighth inch. Okay, now it's an eighth inch. I want to center these two objects. In order to center them, I draw a box around it. There's two ways of doing it, but just to get used to it, you're going to see this red circle. Right above that are the icons that you use to do most everything. So uh, there's one with a vertical line going up. It says a line. If I click that, it will align it. If I, it will, it'll draw a box around it so you can align it. I can also just hit the L on the keyboard, but we're just going to click that. So that will center it this way, and this will center it the other way. This is now centered, like so. Okay, and that's it. Going to be fine right where it is. What I want to do right now, while that's centered, is make another box around it. Straight above this little red circle, there's a little box that's got a large circle attached to it. That groups it. That is now one part. Not two parts, it's one part. And basically, that's going to create uh, a hole with threads in it in this part. Let's make this the size we want right now. So I want this to be four inches. Like so. All right, we now have a four inch. So I want it to be, well, let's see. Maybe, let's try two and uh, 
an eighth because it's small. I want to also show you the flat spots in here. This is not much different than what I did with the threads. You can put a top radius on it if you want. Uh, a base radius. Uh, I ignore that because that's all done. The sides. This is see how we have the same thing with the sides. Max that out. 64 makes it nice and smooth. Now I want to turn this into a hole now. So when I click on it, you got the red one means solid, and the one next to it, it now will make a hole in there. But the hole is going to have threads on it. I'm going to tilt this up so I can see it a little bit better. I'm going to draw around that. Okay, we're going to align this. So same thing. I could hit the L or I could do this. Okay, I'm going to click that one. And we're going to click this one. And just to verify, if I highlight this and make temporarily make that a hole, you can see the threads are in there. Right in the center. I want to make that a solid again and uh, make sure that's threads. Okay, here's the magic. <laughs> this is the fun part. We're going to make a circle around that and then we're going to group everything. And it's going to thread the inside for us. So let's see if it did. Yep, there it is. See, there's our threads. It's as easy as that. And yeah, I've done it a couple times. Play around with this, even if you don't have a 3D printer. I just find this a lot of fun to do. But the, you know, I'm kind of odd when it comes to that. Okay, last thing to do is export this into a folder where you can then send it to your 3D printer. Here's what you do. Now, well, actually, before I do that, I know there's going to be a lot of questions. Well, why didn't you do it in millimeters? Well, I don't use millimeters, but if you want to use them, you go down the right hand corner where it says settings. I got inches as default. Change it to millimeters if that's what you like. Anyways, that does work both ways. So in order to export it, you just go over here and say export. And I pick a STL file. And it goes up here, 3D printed cones. I have a two inch I did. And I'm just going to go four inch diameter cone center and pick save. That is done. Now I'm not going to show you any of the 3D printing, at least setting it up. That's going to be another story. But I maybe I'll show you the part while it's being made just here and there. But I'll come back and then I'll show you the part. So I'll see you probably in a number of hours. I'm going to show you a few pictures of the part being printed. It took about three hours for the big one. And here's the finished part coming up, both of them. There's a four inch and a two inch. I decided I'll go ahead and make something else for the wood lathe and stay tuned for that. It's going to be pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and make another quick little accessory. If you have more than one chuck and you're finding it hard to store them, this will help because you'll be able to make as many of these as you want. You could fasten them to a board that is fastened onto the wall or somewhere where you want to store your chucks and we'll need some threads so we'll bring that in since it's already there and then I'll need a cylinder and actually I, I need two of these so I want to change the size of this this will be the mounting plate I'm going to change that to uh, two inches and of course we'll change this to two inches and height wise, uh, I think a quarter inch is probably plenty. Now we have that. So this will be a, a pin actually to put the hole in it. We'll do that later. Here's our threads. The diameter of the chuck I'm doing is 1.25. And I also have a one inch and, and I'll print some of those because I have a couple of them from a previous lathe and I use those uh, with an adapter for things on this lathe. So we have the one and a quarter and the pitch is eight threads per inch. So it's 0.125. And now the segments, I'll show you this again. Less segments is 
not as smooth, so we go full segments. Rotation, I think probably, and I can adjust this later, but uh, probably about 11 should be sufficient if it even needs that many. I'll bring this over and center it on this disk. Same way, you group that and now it centers with the align tool. Okay, so now we have this and I think I don't want that sticking below, so we will need to lift this a little bit. There. Now, right, I didn't want that on the bottom. <coughs> Now, we're not cutting threads into this, so we just leave this solid. And I can go ahead and group these two together. Now that's become one part. There, it is one part now. I want a hole through here, and we're going to use that to fasten that onto your cleat. And I'll just put a, uh, a 0.2 diameter hole. You can make that based on the screw size you have, but that should be sufficient. And we're going to just drag this up like so. And then we're going to center that on the rest of it. Like so in the alignment tool. And if I click here, and if I click there, it is now centered, like so. It's showing through. We'll turn this into a hole by clicking that icon. And now we're simply going to group these. And we now have our part. That is it. That's all there is to it. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, send it to the printer. I'll maybe show you some of it while it's printing, just photographs. But uh, I also want to go ahead and make a one inch. So we're going to assume I've just saved this. I can ungroup all of this, if I got a hold of it, that is. And I did. So now I actually have to ungroup this section too. All right, now if I want a one inch, I can go over here and change this to one inch. We now have one inch threads right here. So I'll regroup this. And I'll regroup everything. It's still working. There, okay, now it's all grouped. We have the hole through here. I'm going to send this over to the printer as well, and I'll print one of these. So I'll come back when we're all done and show you some photos of what these parts ended up looking like. So I'll see you pretty soon. Here's a few pictures of the chuck holders being printed. It took about an hour and 40 minutes to make one. And here's what they look like when they're all printed. Here they are in the chuck, and a little better look at the threads right here. So I do appreciate you watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. And until the next time, I'll see you later.